Hey guys, in today's video, we're gonna talk about the best golf drill I've ever seen. Hey guys, real quick before we dive into the video, wanna let you know that our Senior Golfer Masterclass is launching next Monday, May 20th. We put together a masterclass on everything for senior golfers specifically. We go through the setup position, backswing, downswing, uh, full game training, practice routines, et cetera, all for senior golfers. So if you're a senior golfer or know a senior golfer, look out next Monday, we're gonna be launching our Senior Golfer Masterclass. Hope you guys enjoy this video. All right, guys, Eric here back outside at Bethlehem Golf Club. I want to talk to you today about the best drill I've ever seen for your golf swing. Now, two quick things before we start. Number one, we did launch all of our golf schools this year, two-day full immersion golf schools at the Bethlehem Golf Club. It is truly the best way we know how to take your golf game to the next level. We'll put a link in the description with details for that if you guys are interested in checking that out. Would love to have you come hang out for uh, two full days, really go through your entire game, take your game to the next level. If you can't come in person, we'd still love to work with you. We created kagornogolf.com for just that reason. We have a site on there, lots of different courses, plenty of quick fix sections. We've got practice sections, guided learning step-by-step -step on everything we talk about here and beyond, as well as our Facebook community where you can post your swing and join our community, join our team of players trying to get better, working together to get better at the game. We'd love to see you there. We'll put a link for kagornogolf.com in the description down below. Now, let's talk about the best drill I've ever seen. Now this drill, as Mary and I kind of talk about things we want to talk with you guys about, is one that always comes up and it's one that I always recommend my players doing. Now this drill is something that I actually used in the first golf lesson I ever got, which was a long time ago. I took my first lesson when I was about 16 years old and the guy that I work with from a local course put this exact station in. I back then had a pretty common problem like most all do where I went really inside early and I came over the top right at the bottom. I hit a little power fade in my mind back in those days and he put this exact station up and uh, it was my first lesson and I foolishly didn't use it after that like I should have. Um, but now in coaching, and I also see um, George Gankus uses a lot, which he calls on his the 10 to 4 station. So I've seen it with George, kind of come back to light, use this back in the day. It's just a plain station. Now, what makes this so good is a couple of different things. And uh, kind of the preface to why I think this is the best drill I've ever seen, it's really, really good at doing two things for you. And number one is getting your club face square or close to the path, which I'll explain. And the second one is getting your path uh, more from the inside during the downswing or more shallow from the top. Now the players that I work with, probably 85-90% of them struggle with one of these two areas. I mean this is legitimately something I think that if every golfer who was learning how to play put this station in and this was the foundation of their swing, uh, our, our average handicap would go down a lot. You know Mary and I were talking about this before and I said you know all the players that I work with who struggle with um, having too much club face rotation, if that's even a thing, having too much club face rotation and having a path too far inside out, all shoot in the 70s. They all break 80 or shoot around par or under par. Every player that I've ever met who does these things I'm going to show you too well plays really good. Okay, so like obviously there's some things in here that can help take your game to the next level. I see this and recommend this a lot to a lot of kind of intermediate or beginner golfers, club face open, uh, path too far over the top. So that's kind of the background of what we're talking about here. Now, what do we have set up? We'll call this, we'll go with the George. If you guys don't follow George Gangs or haven't seen his stuff, you should. Google him, go on Instagram, follow his stuff. He's got awesome, awesome drills. So we're gonna borrow this one um, from him as well. We'll call it the 10 to four station. So the point of this drill is to get your club face to path square, so face to path square closed, and get your path and your downswing more shallow. Okay, and I'm telling you, if you don't break 80 on a regular basis, you should be doing this on a regular basis. Okay, you could ride this all the way to breaking 80. If you can't break 80 after these, then you gotta take a look at chipping, putting, etc. So we have two stations set up, one behind me, one in front. I've got sticks in to demonstrate, and I've got two sticks on the ground. Now let's talk about the sticks on the ground for a second. If I'm standing here face on and this facing straight forward is 12 o'clock, I put sticks on the ground at 4 o'clock and 10 o'clock. And those are designed to kind of give us a swing direction. So here's 12, 1, 2, 3 o'clock, 4 o'clock. This would be my delivery. 
here's 12, 11 o'clock, 10 o'clock. So I really like when George had those put down, he put a stick at 10, stick at four, I love that. This four o'clock, again, one, two, three, four, is where your club should go over during your downswing delivery phase, which would be far more inside than most of you um, kind of normally do, right? And then the 10 o'clock would be where you wanna feel your club goes over in the follow through phase. Now, obviously, we're not actually gonna get that far out, but that's the sensation, dramatically from the inside, dramatically from the outside. So these two sticks are designed to give you swing direction. Now we kind of hedge our bet a little bit with having these buckets and sticks in, okay? So these sticks through the buckets are designed to ensure you get that swing direction station correct. I set these up so that during the downswing, you have to come underneath this bottom stick, and then during the follow through, you gotta go to the right of or above the follow through stick. Now, I just put these in range buckets because most of you will have buckets. Now I set these sticks up, you'll see a couple things. Number one, the back stick is a little bit more bent down. The front stick is a little more vertical. Now I put both of them on at an angle and far enough away where if I take my normal setup, I put the club back. Now the stick is about three quarters of the way down the shaft. I don't want it so close to me that I'd hit my hands and I don't want it so far away I'd miss it. I want this stick to be about three quarters of the way down the shaft on the way back. And I put it in the follow through where it's about half to three quarters of the way down the shaft. Again, that's sort of the sweet spot is half to three quarters of the way down the shaft. So that's how far back and forward the range buckets go. Now, how, where does the actual angles that the sticks are on? Well, based on where I have them, I normally take my club, I put it over my toe line at first parallel, and I get that stick just above that, maybe an inch or two or three in the beginning, but really just above that. See, that stick is angled just above that. I do the same thing on the way through. I put this club at parallel to the ground on my toe line, and I put that stick just underneath that. So I always use my toe line for reference. This stick just above it on my toe line going back, this stick um, just below it on my toe line going through. And the idea is you have to miss these sticks. Now, this is something if you're over the top, you're gonna maybe rail this back stick. You can put a pool noodle over it or go really, really, really slow. And I'm gonna show you in a minute kind of how to start this process, how to practice and how to do it. But I wanted to explain, because I use this so much with my, with my players, this is my go-to station. This is a station you should all learn in terms of solidness of contact. If you're anyone who hits a slice, hits a fade, has bad contact, wants more speed and distance, you want to learn how to do this station. So that's kind of the setup. That's why we're doing it. Let's talk in a minute about how to actually start practicing this station. All right, so how do we actually use this station now? Um, I'm gonna kind of show you how we're doing this now. Always when we're doing some beginning, you're starting with a short club. I've got a nine iron. If this is something that you're drastically over the top, you might go sand wedge, pitching wedge. We're going really slow and short. Now, the best way that I find to do this is I would take my normal setup and I want you to kind of pre-pose this follow through. Now, when we're doing the follow through, I'm setting the club head in my view over that follow through 10 o'clock. So that's part number one. I want the club over here to the right. I don't want it left of this. I don't want to hit this. I don't want it down the line. I want it right of that. But isn't that too far right? Yes, it is. I'm trying to build in a draw and hook pattern for you guys in the beginning, over exaggerated. So I want you over the 10 o'clock position. Now, I don't want it normal over the 10. I don't want the club face straight to the left. I don't want the club face up towards the sky. I want, oops, I want the club face slightly tilted down towards the ground. So you see my club face over there? It's down maybe 45 degrees. So here's a neutral club face. Here's up towards the sky. Here's down 45 degrees. But isn't that too close? Yes, it is. I'm trying to build in a draw and a hook pattern for you. So I want the club face tilted down. Now, how do I tilt that club face down? I do it through arm rotation. That is lead arm supination. Okay, something you're gonna hear a lot from me because all good players do it. I want the logo of the glove pointed slightly down and to the left palm is up towards the sky and my wrist conditions are neutral. I'm not extended here, I'm neutral. So I want club over here, wrist down towards the ground, face tilted down over here. I want you to feel what that feels like. Pop your right hand on and feel the same thing. Now notice when I'm doing this also, I didn't turn my body. I'm not turned like normal over here. My chest and my belt buckle are straight forward and over here. But Eric, I thought you wanted rotation. No, no, I'm trying to build in a draw and a hook pattern here. You gotta learn how to use your arms and hands first then you add rotation second. So left hand, club over the 10 o'clock, turn the face down, so palm up, back of the hand down, reach for it with your right hand, okay, it's okay if your left arm bends, keep your chest and your belt buckle forward, that's your follow through spot. Bring it over the ball underneath this stick, get it back underneath this stick, feel what that feels like, and back over that right stick. 
That's the sensation here. More arms and hands, less body. So I do that again, just to kind of rehearse one. Left arm's over it, 10 o'clock, face tilted down. Back of my hand down, palm up. Right arm over it, good, face tilted down. I'm underneath, underneath, over. That should feel like you're swinging way to the right when you're doing this. Now I'm gonna start my hitting, okay? And when I hit these first couple with my eight iron, or nine iron I have, I'm gonna go really short and slow. These probably won't go any more than 100 yards max. And again, if this is something that feels really drastic, go really, really slow. So I'm gonna take my normal setup, both hands, preset the club over there, I feel it, okay? Back to setup, gonna kind of feel one underneath here. Back to here, feel it preset, normal setup, and then I'm gonna go under and over. And that, for me, is probably about like a five yard draw. Now remember, this station is designed to get the face square or close to the path and get your path to the right. So what you would expect to see is some pushes, some hooks, and some fast and some thins. That's okay in the beginning. You have to learn how to get this lead arm supination. So club over the 10, face tilted down, back of the hand down, palm up, get your right hand on there, good. Under, under, over, nice and slow. I'm gonna reset, grip on, feel it over once, good. Feel it under once, good. I'm gonna go back over, feel that here, and I'm gonna go under and try and get back to that same spot. So that's kind of what I'm feeling when I'm doing that is, I'm going under the stick and then I'm trying to get back to that same spot. Now, I'm already super shallow, okay? So like for me, this just doesn't feel exaggerated. In fact, I overdo this sometimes and get hooks, that's good, okay? I don't struggle to break 80s, that's what I'm saying. These are good problems you guys want. You don't wanna be trying to keep the face super stable. If you've been hitting the ball to the right for a while, you wanna close the face down, even with your hands. Yes, absolutely with your hands. We gotta get the ball curving left. Over it, good. That's where I'm heading. No body rotation, just feeling that. Under, over. Okay, good. And I, if I were you, would do this until you're hitting hooks. Over it to get a feel. Here's where I'm going. Okay, good. I'm going under and over. Okay, good. And that's gonna be little baby draw patterns for me, and I would expect some pushes and hooks. If you're someone who's been fading the ball, slicing it, not good contact, you do this station and you hit three that really pull hook far to the left that are solid, what should you do? You should jump up and down. You should not try and fix that ball that goes way to the left, right? If you're hitting something over here, hit them left. Don't be too quick to fix that. So this is the draw station, 10 to four, best, literally the best draw I've ever used, thing that I think would work for 80 to 90% of people as a go-to. If I ever say to you, or you hear, or you see that your shaft is steep during the downswing, you should do this. If you struggle with pulls and fades, you should do this. If you struggle with slices, you should do this. If you've never hit a draw in your life, you should do this. If you want to hit a draw, you should do this. You could ride this station until you break 80. How you practice it is just like I did, go really super slow, use a short club. Once it gets easy doing a half swing, that might be week number one, a whole week of that. The next week, go a little bit longer, a little bit longer, a little bit longer, and have this as a baseline of your practice. So. 10 to four station, best drill I've ever seen, will work for you. Um, again, unless you're someone who's breaking par and hitting hooks, then don't do this, okay? For 90% of you, you should do this. Hope that makes sense. If you guys have any questions, leave a comment down below. Hey guys, thanks for watching today's video. If you liked the video, please do us a favor, click the like button down below. Click the notification bell if you haven't. Also, please subscribe. Another reminder, every Monday, 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, we are live here on YouTube. We'd love to see you guys there if you have any questions. Thanks, guys.